Well, well, well. Welcome back. Happy Thursday. Wishing you a happy Thursday over here from Helsinki, Finland. Another very snowy day as it just continues to blizzard around here. But you know what? As always, wish you the best of the best. The happiest of the happiest. Bitcoin doing very little since we last spoke. But there are a few things to be aware of as far as the lower time frames go. So let's get on a live scene right over here. Looking at the daily, starting off with the higher time frames as always. And uh, Bitcoin getting a full confirmed rejection by that red 10 simple moon average right over here. In fact, that is a bearish engulfing dildo, which makes it very, 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 very likely to be followed up with a little bit more. So yes, I am actually looking for more continuation off this. Does that mean that we might not have a rally in between? Of course, of course it does not. But as as long as Bitcoin is essentially below this 3,400 level right over here, quite literally exactly 3,400, uh, I do look for this to have more continuation to the downside before having a bounce up. And of course, that's kind of like a nonsense statement, but in order to really get the breath of this I need to go down to the lower time frames and as you can see right over here Bitcoin is consolidating in this in this region and uh, we can actually narrow it down just a little bit more put in a nice horizontal right over here you can also see that the four hour 10 simple moon average is uh, is pushing price action down right now providing a little bit of resistance so as long as Bitcoin is essentially below this guy right over here 3380 um, I am comfortably uh, holding on to this current to the short that I showed actually yesterday so it's been about a little over 24 hours since I began this position again my main account has a slightly better it's a slightly better uh, entry somewhere right around 3440-ish area as I got the alarms in the middle of the night to wake up to that. But <laughs> uh, as long as we are below this area right over here, this consolidation is likely to have another stab down in my opinion. And the reason why I say that is if I can pull out over here, we did break and we did confirm this what looks to me like a rising channel bear flag right over here to the downside that was initiated about 24 hours ago and that actually does have a measure move pointing us a little bit further south and as you can see that'll be pointing us down pretty much back to the prior lows right around about 3200 even now of course that is pretty much in line with this symmetrical triangle right over here which we've been talking about for the last you know the last couple of months actually now as this was formed in the end of december early january and it's very much it's still very much in play as long as we are below the break out point which was all the way over here right around 38 30 ish area that is something that i'm looking for to be overall hit and as you can see ever since bitcoin broke this area right over here it's just been a succession of lower highs and lower lows um which you know yes it's taken quite a bit to play out it's just taken quite literally over a month now or, or, or about a month and a half but it but price action does slowly uh snail its way over the uh, over to this area so this would be around 3250 to 30 uh, 3200 even actually just in this lower block which does kind of make sense if you're familiar with order blocks uh this to me looks like the last line of defense as far as uh as, as far as this consolidation goes which overall you know nothing's changed from the higher time frame perspective this is still very corrective price action you still have that very nice orderly drop off in volume going from left to right on this it being indicative of this being you know a corrective in nature and likely to be resolved to the downside is what that tells us um you know if even fitting a trend line on this guy you can see that it is damn near completion extremely mature uh, at some point in time, once the volume gets down to a very small pitter patter, which we per currently pretty much are at, I mean, it can, you know, it can, when, when I say that we're looking at, you know, over two months of price action, actually about three months of price action. So this can still take like another two weeks to a month, but it is getting, it's getting incredibly close. Um, as far as I'm concerned, we are just filling out this guy right over here. If we just extend that symmetrical triangle resistance all the way out and, uh, we're working on some sort of a massive decision triangle which Bitcoin does have a history of playing these guys out did form one above 6,000 if you remember you probably do remember it wasn't too long ago right over here I'm sure a lot of people wish that part that price action was back around there but hey you know things move and overall uh, Bitcoin the very the very delicate thing with Bitcoin right now to get my words out um, more accurately speaking is what what's likely to happen if if bitcoin comes back down to this down to this area right over here are we likely to bounce back up start filling out this area and then fall over or or does it just go straight flush through? I strongly believe that the lows are not in, so I don't I don't really have any re reason to believe that uh, that Bitcoin's going to reverse on from here and get back above four thousand anytime soon. The reason why I say that is because the monthly, which is a very important time frame, again uh, coming from my background as being a market maker in equity options, I am used to looking at the monthlies because you know equities typically have decades of of actual price action history. And uh, looking at this setup right over here with Bitcoin breaking the green fifty five exponential for the first time in its overall 
overall history, uh, that is not a good look. And to me, that is likely to be extremely strong resistance, which is currently coming in right around 30, 36.60. So if people are talking about, you know, a bounce up into the 4,000s, I think that that's incredibly unlikely, incredibly unlikely. Um, I don't believe that Bitcoin is going to be closing any monthlies above. And I, sorry, and to be very clear, closing monthlies above not just getting above, you can get a wick above, but closing a monthly above this green 55 exponential probably probably it hits its lows first before that actually happens. Um, and uh, and I'd imagine that if we did get a wick above, it would probably fall short of the current uh, of the high of the last total, which is 4127. Of course, that's quite, you know, quite a bit higher. But my point is that anywhere in that region, if Bitcoin were to bounce up, I would be looking at a massive sell. Um, and you'll notice that that 3650, 3700-ish region would essentially be the top of that descending triangle that we just kind of drew out right over here. So if we can get back on over to GDAX and uh, put on my beautiful drawing tools. Yeah, if uh, this descending trend line right over here, why is my internet so slow right now? This is so embarrassing. Yeah, it would be coming in right around about that 3,700 um, area, a little bit above 3,700 uh, current price action. So, you know, putting all these things into, into, into play together, you know, we can come up with a plan or I can come up with a plan. Of course, it's not financial advice and not a financial advisor, just sharing, you know, my experience and sharing what I'm thinking of these sort of exact same situations um, and how I'll be managing this position right over here. So I'm happy to hold on to this short right over here as long as we are essentially below that 34 80 ish, or sorry, 33 80 ish area right over here. Um, th this resistance, as long as we're closing, you know, hourly dildos below there, don't really want to be not short <laughs> as far as that goes uh bitcoin does get back above that area it's not necessarily party over just yet um 40 uh, 3400 is the formal resistance more uh more accurately on a daily if bitcoin gets back above 3400 though i do believe that we actually probably would make a run um likely to 3500 ish area now what makes this a very delicate situation right now is there's there's a lot of things to be aware of right there's a lot of things to be aware of and if we put on a couple more uh horizontals and kind of map out this block right over here the way that I'd be playing this is that as long, you know, as long as Bitcoin is below 3475, 3480, just basically the high of this consolidation right over here. And it's uh, after the series of lower highs on this nice little bear market walk down, I do want to be looking for those shorts. The thing is, is that as soon as Bitcoin gets real, if, as soon as Bitcoin really gets there or especially above there, I do not want to be short. In fact, probably want to be considering a long, uh, technically, you know, 3,500 is your formal resistance. But uh, if Bitcoin does get back above there, extremely likely that this thing makes an actual run towards the top of the range, I'd imagine. Um, you know, maybe even gets a little bit of a false breakout above, just like you got uh, over here in, 20, uh, in 2018. Sorry, yeah, it was 2018 right over here. You know, everyone was looking at the falling wedge, got a, bro got, uh, got a breakout in. And I believe this was July and then got faded pretty damn quick, uh, pretty damn quickly. So again, you know, it's, it, it's a delicate situation in this area, but yes, overall, the idea for me is looking for a short. I really want to get it out there though, that I'm not looking for any sort of price action into the four thousands or, or sorry. I mean, I, I guess more accurately speaking above 4,100, although anything above 3,700 is going to be pretty difficult for price action to get above there. Um, I would imagine. And there are the more and more that I look around the crypto Twitter sphere, it does seem like a lot of people are waiting for some sort of a double bottom um, on this area right over here, which, you know, yeah, you do have your prior low right over there. And we did have a phenomenal rally off that. I mean, a 30% rally is definitely nothing to balk at. But um, the way that price action is kind of inching its way slower and slower down around here, um, in my opinion, would suggest that we actually probably do flush through. Now, this is an opinion, not technical analysis. Of course, technical analysis comes first. Opinion is irrelevant. I don't trade my opinion. It's 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 worthless. But my opinion is that we probably do shoot down through this area um, if, if and when Bitcoin does get back down around there. The reason why I say that is because if Bitcoin does get back down to the 3250-ish area, that'll actually destroy or, or likely come in confluence with destroying something that I think is even more, more important than that area. And that is the weekly 200 simple moon average, which we have already touched down on last week, or at least what I consider a touchdown. And we have formally touched down on it again, or once again, this week, or, or about $10 shy. Again, both weeks pretty fucking close. And close enough is close enough. To me, the the reaction last week was front ran, and, the, and, and this week is just like... We're still very, we're, we still have a few days left in the week. So, I'll, you know, if, if Bitcoin were to end down here, I would not interpret that as good. If, if Bitcoin is going to play a bounce off this area, I want to see the weekly essentially end back above, I mean, preferably 3,500, but uh, 3, if it ended back above 3,400, things would look a little bit more interesting. Um, 
but uh, I do. This does kind of suggest that we're going to see some price action, you know, either which way before before the end of the weekly at uh, on uh, Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So again, looking at the weekly right over here, oscillators are certainly bearish. We got our weekly Stokes actually having a fresh cross down in the more critical zone, which to me is that 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 just suggests that the trend is heavily bearish uh weekly rsi basically same sort of a thing just trending well below the exponential on this guy um and uh and heavily in the grips of the bearish control zone so overall looking at this that will be the next play in my opinion most likely whether the weekly closes above or below the 200 simple which is currently 3314 in some odd sense on bitstamp now again that closes on sunday east, uh 7 p.m eastern time so you know if bitcoin does get back down to that 3250 range this is gonna look to me like it probably wants to break and i'd actually be comfortable with making a little bit more of an expedited decision on putting on a position or at least I, I think it would be worth it. Um, a lot of people are not. I don't believe. I, I I do believe that the that the general sentiment is either a bounce on prior lows or people are looking at it to bounce right now. As uh, I see a lot of the divergence, people's uh, getting on the game once again. This is there. There's in no way, shape, or form bullish divergence on this. And the reason why I say that is because you need stopping points. You need local lows to compare to compare to each other. And right now we don't even have a local low over here confirmed to compare to each other. Uh, if it did stop here, if the daily did put in some sort of a, like a, re, uh, a a local low dildo, whether it be like a doji dildo or which is not even confirmed in itself, it needs to you know get have some fall through above it. Or if it put in some sort of a hammer, anything like that, again, still needs fall through. But then yes, then we could maybe discuss that. But two drives on a formation like this is you know it's it's it doesn't do it for me uh daily stokes by the way just crossed down confirming a cross down um after yesterday and uh we are again heavily in the in, in the grips of the bearish control zone um we do see daily rsi trending below the exponential right over here and uh overall this is telling me that this whole consolidation also confirmed that this consolidation is a bearish consolidation just also in between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone right over here for the last you know couple months just this whole price action is essentially what it what it encompasses um and if we do put back on the 10 simple over here swap it out for the 200 because well that's not too <laughs> it's not too relevant right now it's too it's too far away from price action uh you do see that is <laughs> Still gaining divergence away from the yellow 21 exponential moving average. So again, telling us that the trend is strengthening slowly but surely to the downside as price action just slowly but surely sheared off the cliff. As you can see, you know, basically Bitcoin put in, as, as we spoke about before, you know, our, 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 our pair of highs right over here and created a symmetrical triangle along the way and then ever since then you know we broke down you put in a bear flag i mean you basically put in a rising channel right over here another rising channel right over here another rising channel right over here and again that is just the bear market walk down and if we do take it one step further put on some fibs and i do believe that this is important because this will also kind of confirm or really be a major confirmation factor to me um on the next move on uh, of what we're likely to do because it's given us insight on what the bots and algos are doing right now which this market is certainly heavily bought and algo driven which is not a bad thing all markets are so it's just a talking point when other people say that kind of a bullshit but in crypto it's a little bit more pronounced because well you'll about to, you're about to see i mean bitcoin has a 50 percent drawdown right over here you know coming coming from six thousand to three thousand essentially uh bounces up first bounce up and retraces down to where to the 618 gets front ran a little bit whereas the bot algos are going to be a little bit above the 236 probably the 132 or whatever the fuck the 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 one is right over here pops back down to the to the 618 where's the target going to be well just walk it down 382 right over here pops back down to the 618 where's the target going to be the 0.5 pops back down to the 618 and the, it actually breaks so that was the first big signal that hey this is is uh, just once again another thing in the in, in the formation of this being a bearish consolidation, and uh, and and actually the sell the sell pressure starting to increase just a little bit more um, as it loses the six one eight and is not able to retest it. More importantly during this consolidation right over here it gets stopped right at that critical thirty four seventy area that we spoke about um, throughout this past couple weeks. So. Uh, on the current stature of this, and I'm going to adjust this for the four-hour dildo time frame, we are pretty much on the 786 Fibonacci retracement, which is which is some nice uh, historical support, um, and uh, and basically the prior low of this consolidation right over here. So things are a little bit tricky right now. They certainly are a little bit tricky. I'm going to put in another horizontal right here and denote this this lower block that we're in. So. I do believe that it's more likely that the 786 breaks before the 618 breaks. And it would not surprise me if we actually broke the 786 and then came back to test the 618 and then played out the major down. Um, 
ask. But uh, but overall, what I'm looking at right over here is uh, price action can kind of float around. But as long as it does not break the 7470-ish area right over here, this is you know more likely to break the seven the 786 resistance uh, before it is not. Now, of course, if it does break back above 3380-ish area, would I want to be short off that? No, I wouldn't want to be short. I'd be wanting I'd be wanting to reposition probably somewhere right around here if you know if that and if it gets above 34 70 ish area then i do not want to be short and in fact you know at that point i i think that it'd be pretty damn likely that you do break the 618 and then initiate that run into the 3700 ish area so again multiple plays be made um whichever whichever way happens so for now i'm positioned for the play that you know price actually tell me for if uh if if it adjusts the other way well then then it's all it's always okay to change your position uh change your position when you change your mind <laughs> but it makes it's okay to change your position and it's okay to change your mind but make sure that you change your position when you change your mind. It's something that my mentor used to always say. You can see that uh, volume profile suggesting that we're in a nice cluster right now. And again, as soon as we lose this lower cluster, which we're actually at the lower end of, there's really not much doing. There's really not much doing right around here. So again, just another thing that I, my opinion is 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 quite clear. I do think that this thing actually flushes through. Um, I know that I've been guilty of saying that, you know, in uh, over the past month that I believe that is probably going to, you know, bounce around this area for quite some time. I think that that's less likely with the way that we've seen the reaction off the 200 simple this last two weeks. If it was going to be a nice bounce, I wanted to really see it actually happened last week and then this week have some follow through with that the fact that it's hesitating down around here is typically not a good sign in my experience typically not a good sign strong support only needs to be support once and well i mean coming back down just a second time is not necessarily the most strong thing but 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 basically you know in this area right over here where we come down two and three times that is likely indicative of it breaking if price action gets back down around that area you know yeah you probably do get like a very small bounce around 3200 3250 but i would imagine that that gets faded before you know before it really gets a chance to uh to bounce back up i mean even above like this the area that we're currently in right now um so again looking at the volume profile right over here there is there is a very little very fucking little <laughs> once once we lose this current area um and by the same token if bitcoin does break back above 34 uh 60 ish area or 34 70 ish areas we just spoke about before really not much stopping it until we get to that 36 50 ish area which you know again another 200 dollars play to the upside so for now pressure is on to the downside but 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 if that were to happen to the upside then that's actually another good trade as well um as uh you know 200 dollars in this market right now is almost a 10 percent move I mean, that's that's how crazy and flighty and floaty this market is right now. So just put things in perspective, understand that uh, that truth of the market. Um, so, yeah, uh, looking at our let's let's go through a little bit more of the higher time frames. Did we set in another two day dodo time frame? Uh, no, we did not. Uh, two day dodos um, have not initiated continuation off of last week's um, drop. Uh, BitMexico has, but the other all the other, all, all the exchanges have not. Um, but I would imagine that ending your two-day dildo down around here would not be interpreted very well. Uh, two-day jewel, well, it told you to sell ages ago. So that's, <laughs> it, it was kind of ahead of the price action. If, if I would have just taken that, would it have had a little bit better of a position? Um, two-day Stokes over here still headed south, uh, not able to, giving you a little bit of snake right over here and still staying healthily in the bearish control zone. Uh, two-day RSI and is, is very important as well as we did play out some hidden bearish divergence right over here, right over here, making higher highs in the oscillator lower highs on price action in the overall context of a downtrend and that typically makes it likely to come back down to the lower end of the bearish control zone you can see that we have tested the exponential right over here and we're wrangled by it so yes i do believe that this is you know it's it's likely to probably play out um but again you know on a two-day total time frame this that can take a long time we've literally been looking at that for the last month and a half so to put the time aspect in perspective you know this these when these things are relatively close that's still you know a couple weeks to a month away most likely uh it's probably gonna be pretty boring um probably gonna be a pretty boring most of the month uh in february i'd imagine so yeah uh, let's go check out uh three day right over here three day got a new tick yesterday and what did we see come on three day load you motherfucker there we go uh three days still headed south you know not not uh, not conversion on each other still still gaining momentum away from each other below all major movement averages uh having the 21 getting health will be below the 377 that's not good uh the 10 simple just you know slowly but surely for forcing price action down but still don't, still haven't taken out the low of this guy right over here i believe we came three bucks shy on gdax yesterday of doing that uh again bitmexico the only one who actually did do something like that uh three day rsi same thing right over here as a two day essentially uh clear rejection of the exponential and back down 
um, again, just a bearish consolidation overall is uh, is a signature that we're getting. And uh, if we go back on over to the four day, which I do think is quite interesting because the four day is giving us a fresh stoke cross to the downside and getting rejected by this uh, uh, by the edge of the bearish control zone. So telling me that the bears are remaining in control. They have been in control ever since uh, heavily since since September when Bitcoin was calling around the six thousand level. Again, telling you that it was a bearish consolidation likely to be resolved to the downside. And each and every time that this thing does cross down, these are pretty major drops. I mean, the last time it happened, we actually broke six thousand. The couple times before that were very were small drops, but they were but they were you know two hundred, three hundred, four hundred dollar drops. Uh, right over here, this was a major drop from about uh, two thousand dollars from eight thousand to six thousand. This over here was ten thousand to six thousand. Right over here, so it does actually get price action pretty damn well. Um, four hour dildo, or sorry, not four hour, but four day dildo death cross right over here. Green fifty five and purple two hundred exponential. That is the only type of dildo death cross, by the way. <laughs> a lot of people are sending me stuff saying, Crown, there's a death cross over here. It's like not everything is a death cross, man. Most of the time, crosses don't matter all that much. But uh, but on certain inputs, they do have very, very big follow through, especially in a market like this. Um, and, you know, same thing right over here. I mean, we don't necessarily have continuation. Uh, BitMexico over here does. We do have new lows, uh, 33.30. And the low of last week was 33.43. So 13 bucks lower. Um, I do want to check out Finex. Finex is interesting because it, he does still have that nice premium or not nice premium, depending upon your disposition. And we do have new lows on Finex. And the weird thing about Finex is that... It does seem to me that price action actually follows Finex more accurately. And what I mean, and then I have to explain what I mean by that. What I mean by that is, yeah, Finex does have a weird premium. I don't know what that's all about. It has something to do probably with crypto capital and, and all that bullshit. I, I won't get into that. Definitely go check out Crypto Zombies Black Swan video for, for information on that. But what I can say is that on Finex, when we do see an obvious pattern, it actually does have more of a likelihood of playing out. And over here with making new lows, again, a, a clear rejection of bearish engulfing dildo on a daily, uh, no less, of uh, and, and rejection of the red 10 simple right over here. Uh, I do believe that this is likely to have some further for, uh, further follow through. And like I said, this is the only other exchange um, besides BitMexico that has actually seen continuation off of the weekly lows. So we are, you know, we are quite literally trending right now. This is this is this is continuation rather than consolidation, which is what we saw right over here, right over here after the bearish engulfing weekly total right over here. So again, one of those things where. I'm looking at this and uh, I would be thinking that it's more likely that we have that that, uh, that we have that move sooner rather than later. Um, again, to that to, uh, to 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 credit that, you know, again, the very uh, the very lovely fall off in volume that we're witnessing going from left to right over here, uh, suggesting that a move is likely coming in, uh, very, 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 very uh, soon. Again, very soon, meaning, you know, a couple couple weeks to a month. Uh, Bitcoin volatility, uh, historical volatility index right over here. We are literally at lows. Um, this is, you know, th this is basically where we were where we were in October and November before. Well, you probably you probably remember that uh, if we put on the historical volatility rank, it should be showing something similar as well. Now, these things don't tell you which way that consolidation is going to break, but it does give you insight into when a when the likelihood of a move uh, increases exponentially. So let's get let's put this guy right on right over here and the historical and the historical volatility rank getting really, 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 really far down there. And before we I was looking at it on a four hour. Now I'm on a six hour, which is, you know, 50 percent higher of a time frame. And the historical volatility rank is getting very, very low on this guy as well. You even have that nice, like orderly, you know, trending down essentially, which tells you that this consolidation is nearly ready. It's nearly it's nearly ready to have to, to have a nice burst. <laughs> Just that's nice. Six nine percent full and we burst um and looking at this area right over here this is typically where bitcoin does put in some major moves so last time we were in this area as far as the historical volatility rank goes bitcoin you know made that move breaking six thousand down to three thousand right over here the time before that was you know the september dump right over here or sorry yeah the early september dump right over here from about 74 to six thousand in a day um the time before that was right over here i mean the june the june dump right so again uh historically speaking this is 
pretty, I don't want to say unprecedented, it's certainly not unprecedented, but but when it does get down around there, historically, we do see major, major moves, like major breakouts out of uh, out of consolidations, like big consolidations. Um, now, again, it doesn't tell you which direction it's likely to go, although my opinion, based off of the price action, the volume catch was the structure, and just about everything else uh, does say it's more likely to break out to the downside than the upside. But again, remember, I do, that's, that's, an, that's more of an opinion than anything as if Bitcoin does get back above 3470 tentatively and especially 3530 right over here, 3520, I would not want to be short and I would be looking actually probably for a long for, for a couple hundred bucks. Um, so that that is what kind of makes this this uh, this area a little bit tricky. Again, though, I, I think it's a little bit more likely that we actually do break the 786 down around here first. But hey, again, uh, I will be taking off this short position to be very clear, to be very fucking clear right over here uh, if Bitcoin gets back above 30, 3380 right over here. Um, so again, a, a no loss position, which is, well, feels good, man. Um, <laughs> a little Pepe over there. Anyways, you will notice that the lower support of this uh, of this guy right over here also lined up with the 886 and the 942, uh, which to me, you know, it's I mean, it's not super important, but yeah, it, I mean, if if price action does get down around there, it probably does have a bounce, but I, I think I still think it's a little bit more likely that the bounce gets faded relatively quickly before getting anywhere anywhere near 3,500 most likely, and then puts in new lows. Again, if this is a descending triangle and we are looking at it as such, well, we can make a measure move off this baby now, can't we? And the measure move on this descending triangle would be pointing all the way down towards. Where is it? Come on, show me the money, baby. Show me the money. Yeah, down around here towards. Come on, chart load, you little asshole. Uh, right around 2340-ish area, which by the way, you'll probably remember that because right over here on the BLX index, which we were looking at earlier, we do have the monthly, which remember we broke the green 55 monthly for the first time in Bitcoin's overall history. We are actually uh, in, da in grave danger of getting the 10 simple and the, and the yellow 20 exponential crossing the downside as well. Um, but the next target would likely be 2400, 2450, which is where this 89 is coming in right around here. If we do go over to the Bitstamp, chart over here and we just look at and we just bring out a few more things well we can see that this uh that that i have that actually have this area marked off with it with this nice blue box from about 2300 to 2600 you have the 886 Fibonacci retracement coming in right around there which is actually where bitcoin did bottom out in 2014 right over here and we do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area and if we put on the volume profile on on this weekly total time frame there is a massive high value node coming in right around here which is the highest one that we've seen all year although the highest of the high on the on the block over here is all the way down at 1000 again i'm never going to say that bitcoin is definitely going down uh somewhere until you know in, in, until i've seen the other uh, things you know necessary to to basically be demonstrative of this bounce already failing. Let me just actually do want to make sure that my output is good. Please do let me know if the sound is actually good on this uh, on this video because I've been playing around with it a little bit, so I hope that it's uh, it's working well. But my point is, is that hey, each and every one of these you know major areas I will treat as a potential bottoming area. Um, because remember, you know, when we're talking about major market cycle lows, it's more about you know big institutions, big entities with extremely deep pockets that can go in and create lows and once they do you know uh, keeping in mind their sort of perspective which is to accumulate as much as possible at as low as possible then their their hand is essentially shown which is why you get price action like this over here and then all the retailers jump in because well i mean they're they're aware of what it looks like uh so again you know be aware of that sort of effect as people really get that get the cause and effect of that sort of a situation very backwards so don't be caught in that because it's more about the reaction than anything. And I need to see a reaction just like this bounce over here was not good enough. Uh, if Bitcoin does get in, in, in this area, I will treat it as a potential reversal until I see the reaction. And if the reaction is not good enough, then go on to the next one, just like we did over here. Um, but just from, from, from the weekly total time frame perspective, as long as Bitcoin's opening and closing these weekly totals below that 200 exponential moving average, this purple line right over here, 41.30. Pretty fucking bearish, man. Pretty fucking bearish. Um, but yeah, you know, a lot of things coming around that area. So that is the next area that I look towards uh, towards if um, if 3200, 3250 breaks officially. Again, my opinion is that if Bitcoin even just gets back down around there, that's that's not going to be good. Uh, let's go check out longs and shorts. Um, longs, people actually adding in the last day. We've added uh, about a thousand longs in the last 24 hour period. I do believe that, you know, we are, th sorry, 31,000. 
31, uh, 31 and a half thousand, I should say, uh, open long. So that is certainly, you know, significantly outweighing the shorts, but the shorts have added quite a bit as well. They are 26 or sorry, 25,000, a little over 25,000 right now. Um, again, anytime shorts get down to this critical area down around the low 20,000 area it does match up with some pretty nasty dumps, like the biggest dumps that we've seen over the last couple of years. Uh, we had this, we had, we had this spike down around here. Um, this was your March dump from 10,000 to 6,000. This was your August dump from 8,000 to 6,000. This was your dump of 6,000 to 3,000. And then we once again got in this range on um, uh, about a couple weeks ago, it looks like two, three weeks ago. And uh, and is Bitcoin gonna you know work off that? Well, it tells us that bears have plenty of dry. I'm gonna go and draw if they want to. Going over here to Datamish, we can actually see that the longs funny rate is going up um, more. It's it's actually about doubled since yesterday at 0.038%, which is getting a little bit more up there. Not cer It's certainly not like crazy high, but you are, but to hold a million dollar position, you will be paying a, a few thousand bucks a day uh, just for that. And especially when price action is not necessarily on your side. Well, good fucking luck. Uh, shorts over here, not paying any rate, which is just bizarre. I uh, Again, this, it's been that way for the last two, three weeks. Um, that's unprecedented as, as, as far as I can remember, I've never really seen it that low. I, again, I don't trade on Finex, so I don't, I can't really actually verify that myself, but, uh, that is the going rate. So I, so I hear, uh, let's go check out GBDC, which I think is incredibly important right now. GBDC, which has been leading spot prices for the last over a year, actually finally breaking down, finally breaking down, although has it. Although has it now on the daily right over here, it does look like we have a hammer dildo on decent volume and right at re right at support, which actually if I do this on a daily, it'd, it'd look a little bit some more like this, which would be indicative of probably a bounce playing out a little bit of a fake out to the downside bear trap and then move up, which would likely initiate a run to back to 3,500, I'd imagine, for spot chart uh, spot charts. But it, going into lower time frames right over here, it's not so clear. We have a we have a clear breakage of this rising channel bear flag right over here, uh, respects it as resistance. It kind of, I, I count this as a retest right here and right here, rejects. This is actually a descending triangle as well. And that breaks down, but bought up mostly um, yesterday, bought up mostly yesterday. So this is a little bit, it's a, <laughs> it's a little bit difficult right now because what I really want to see when you have a major pattern like this breaking down, you actually don't want to see it get retested, especially right away. You want to see, I mean, it, it will get retested at some point, but like you want to see it like months down the road, not the next fucking day. Um, so the fact that this is just like slowly but surely snailing its way down is kind of a warning sign to me. Now, the warning sign will officially be validated in my mind if GBTC can get back above this $3.93 region right over here. But a long day to go and we have to wait until this guy actually opens with the with the uh, with traditional marks as it trades otc just some more otc bullshit but the daily the daily is certainly less than certain as it actually being broken when it gets bought up like this going all the way down to a uh, wick down to three dollars six six cents and then ends the day at uh 385 386 have to be careful with that um measure move off this off this uh, rising channel bear flag would be pointing us down towards this uh two dollars and 55 cent two dollars 50 cents six cent region which would you know likely align with spot charts somewhere in the mid to low 2000s actually um and uh if we do look at the volume profile you will notice that we are essentially in no man's land right now i mean really struggling to hold on to this last high value node in fact i would i would argue that it has been lost that's all the way around um for about four dollars so if gbc does get back around there Yes, it still can get rejected. However, if if GBDC does get back around that area that we spoke about, I think it was 393 back above the breakdown point. I I would be thinking more bear trap than anything, and we're probably gonna you know play some upside uh, upside upside out. So, but for now, you know, living still living below there, so I still go with the downside until told otherwise. Um, again, that's how I respond to price action if that does change. But for now, still. You know, still, still below, technically still below, but as you can see, very little being done all the way from basically where we are right now. Um, I mean, e even in where, even where I have this measure move is not all that much. I mean, it, it's basically pointing all the way down to about 1.5, which would put Bitcoin well into one into the one thousands on spot. Uh, so this has been leading, uh, this has been leading Bitcoin for the, for over a year now. Um, and, uh, and I'd imagine that whichever way that, that this one actually does, whether it's a bear trap or actually has continuation today, we're going to find out. We will find out today, I'd, I'd imagine. It's, if it's a bear trap, it will get back above today, and we will know. It, you, there will be no questions asked. And if it doesn't get back above today, then it's probably not going to be a bear trap. You, you don't want to see too much hesitation on that either. Um, let's go over here and check out spies. Let's go check out regular marks, traditional marks over here. And uh, what do we have? 
Can I pull this guy out? Yeah, we are right around, I believe, the 200 simple, actually. Um, but again, I I can't exer- I, I like to exercise caution on something like this. You know, a lot of people are trying to be Mr. Hero timing the next top, which was appropriate coming in at the end of January when there is a chance for that. But when the monthly 21 exponential was 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 surpassed on the on on the monthly, sorry, that's too redone it. Um, no longer am I am I gung ho about finding that. I need to see a I need to see proof of a reversal first. Now we are kind of getting in the thick of some resistance. You actually even do see some uh, initiated off of yesterday. Let me just get rid of that. Uh, we do have what could be a little bit of a topping dildo in place right now on top of the 200 simple moving average. But it's you know it's the same sort of a thing. I need to see price action confirm a reversal. We haven't re- really seen that just yet. Do we have a topping dildo in place? Maybe if we take out the low of it then maybe we have something to talk about but for now it's still actually just consolidation as this is a com- is as as this dildo is completely just inside engulfed by the prior which tells me again this is you know not really too much to make out of this just t- uh hits off the 200 simple you know algo's going to sell that and then however we co- i mean we could come all the way back down to 267 269 and a half and that would be okay i mean it's that's the 200 simple is likely or sorry the 200 exponential this purple line coming in right around here likely to be some stronger support so as long as uh, as long as uh, spiders are above that don't really i i it's hard to be bearish it's it's hard to be bearish as long as this thing's above 267 now i would be cautious i would certainly be very cautious i mean I am, my opinion still is, 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 is that there will be a, there will be a massive top and probably a nice, a nice reversal, but it's so important to relate these ideas and separate my opinion from technical analysis and technical analysis says, wait for the fucking reversal. Jesus Christ, man. So many, so many bears just impaled on green dildos that are rising ever so slightly higher and higher day by day. So again, keep that in mind. Um, if, uh, if spy, if spiders do get above 274, um, don't really see too much stopping from uh, 278 to 280 ish area. Um, so again, got a lot to, uh, got a lot to do with that one. You do have a pretty damn good cross on the exponentials right over here. So I would be cognizant of that. However, again, uh, it's th- this this one's very difficult right now. I'd be so much more comfortable waiting for a reversal than trading any more upside right over here. Although, you know, weekly looks fine. Weekly does look fine. Um, so yeah, I believe I believe monthly uh, resistance should be coming into in, in line soon as well. Let's uh, put on the ten simple right over here. Where is he coming in around? Probably two seventy eight. Yeah, in fact, I believe we actually already took a stab at him. Yep, we did two seventy four. Uh, so again, it's it's certainly on my mind. But in order to see it fully confirmed, I need to see this thing come back down. I mean, really below two sixty two is where it becomes confirmed in my mind. But if it starts, you know, giving up the two hundred exponential, I'd say, I'd say it's it's probably worth a position at that point. Um, you know, is it is is it con, is it confirmed reversal at that point? No, fuck no, it's not. But it's probably worth the position at least for me. Again, it's not financial advisor, not a financial advisor. Just sharing what I do in these in these that sort of same situations. Let's go check out uh, Mr. XRP Ripple's nipples over here and Ripple's nipples uh, looking nasty once again. Looking nasty once again, just slowly but surely just slumping its uh, little red dildos uh, lower and lower. Again, same thing as Bitcoin though. Until you actually break this lower support right over here, you can play ping pong alongside this. Uh, but also same thing as Bitcoin, as long as you blow 34 and a half cent, extremely fucking bearish, like extremely, extremely bearish. Um, but if it does break 28 cents, which again, needs to confirm below there first, then yes, then I do look towards mid to high teens for this guy. Um, as, uh, this is, this is a pretty bearish setup, but, uh, Hey, if you get back above 34 and a half cents, maybe we do have some new going on. Like I said, I don't short ripple just cause you don't, you never know when, when garlic house going to flip that goddamn switch and just send this thing to the moon or, <laughs> or knock on your door and say, Hey, Hey, about those ripples, you owe me two bucks for every one of these pieces of shit. You motherfucker. Well, fair enough. Uh, Litecoin over here, Mr. Litecoin or Mrs. Litecoin, I should say, he is still a woman's, he is still a she's, um, or whatever gender pronoun that you prefer, Miss Charlie Lee. Over here, though, uh, rejected right at uh, the 3450 top of, top of the range resistance that we've been speaking about for the last, I don't know, week or two or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, yeah, it did look better than most majors, but just like just like we spoke about before, if most majors don't look good and then this one is you know kind of hinting at a little bit of strength, be really careful. And as you can see, selling off when everything else sold off yesterday as well. Again, as long as you're below 34 and a half cents, um, sorry, 34 and a half bucks, no, no real upside to be to really be playing. Uh, if you do give up the 21 exponential moving average right over here, it probably comes back down to like, you know, 31 bucks, uh, technically $30 over here is the bottom of the range, range support, maybe, maybe a little bit, some more like this. 
Um, but overall, just consolidation is my point. Uh, doesn't look looks a little bit more strong uh, strong than than the other uh, than the other majors. But again, if the other majors fall apart. I don't think uh, Mr. Uh, Charlie Lee is going to save that one either. Let's actually redo this whole chart. I do want to redo this. Um, let's put on a fib first things first because it's probably going to line up with exactly the same levels as Mr. Bitcoin. And there you go. You can see that we st we got Stonewall at the 618 right over here. Beautiful. Uh-oh. Elsa's having a... She's barfing. Uh <laughs> Uh, we got this guy right over here, uh, 107, 106 support uh, currently. Uh, 786 is not actually around this area. Interesting. Um, let's use dildo bodies on this uh, really quick. Uh, let's try that. Okay. Does that line up any better? We have 618 right over here. What if we use what if we use wicks on this guy? Now here's the problem. Here's what I don't like about fibs is that I. There's no real rule when it comes to these. It's just whichever one fits better. You can see that the you can see that the wicks actually are getting it better on Mr. Buterall because B Mr. Buterall wicks so fucking hard. More importantly, on the lower time frames right over here, there was a massive rejection yesterday. I mean, look at all the selling on this uh, on this wick right over here. Now we are starting to wick our we are starting to work our way a little bit higher off this, but uh, as long as you're below this this uh, this flaggish support, now I want to see confirmed as resistance. Uh, I would be looking at that as probably a sell, and that's all the way at. 108 and a half uh, again daily area would be 107 um, sorry uh, yeah 107 and we have support right down around here right around 102 the current low 103 so again you know it's very similar to Bitcoin have your descending triangle right over here have your Wyckoff distribution top right over here you know, it's it's pretty cut and dry with the way that it's playing out with this distribution markdown, sending triangle redistribution markdown, basically rising channel right over here and probably getting ready for another markdown, I'd imagine. Uh, as long as again, as long as you're below 108, I don't really think I, I wouldn't really be considering this as I mean, is it going to be a bear trap? I, I, I think unlikely you will be seeing some bullish divergence, I believe, on the 12 hour. Yeah, in fact, you have some pretty hefty bullish divergence on the 12 hour right now. Um, but it's very difficult for me to be for me to be bullish on something that, you know, is below all major movement averages like this. So, again, you know, looking at this area right over here, adjusting it for the 12 hour. Yeah, as long as you're below about 108 and a half. Uh, I just look at this as a retest of this breakdown um, and on lower time frames looks a lot more nasty of a rejection but same thing on this guy you know if, if he breaks down below the 102 and a half support then I'd be looking towards about 94 bucks and at that point in time it's like all right yeah you probably do bounce a little bit around there but probably probably in for some new lows at that point as well um, weekly on Mr. Buter looks quite nasty indeed in fact uh, I believe that we have continuation on this guy yes indeed we do we do have continuation and I believe that we have continuation on well Litecoin doesn't really have a have a full-on one going uh, Mr. Stella over here does have continuation as well uh, severe continuation actually and still trying to find some semblance of a support which uh, as far as I have it is the next big one is down around six cents um, pretty, pretty disgusting price action, pretty bad price action. I don't know why people, are, I see a lot of people posting like bullish divergence charts on this. I guess the three day right over here might be, might be putting a Jesus Christ stoppage dildo, but it's like Jesus Christ, stop it. You know, that kind of shit. No, it's uh, basically a little bit of a reversal doji on that, um, hammer, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But again, very low volume, no follow through just yet. doesn't mean it can't happen, but will you, will you even print some bullish divergence? I mean, actually, that's in question because this is this is just ugly. It, it's it's really ugly, man. I, you know, I don't even care if this thing does bounce. If it, if it were to bounce all the way to nine and a half cents, I'd be a gift of a sell most likely. Um, uh, but yeah, if everything else, you know, if it, when everything else kind of looking a little bit weak, you, we do see a lot of the same uh, same signatures on this guy. So. Is he just in an, in an advanced um, uh, formation? You know, it, like we're seeing about the same things kind of play out on everything, right? Where you have this consolidation for about a year right over here, gives you a bull trap, mark down, breaks, bra uh, breaks the lowest port of this, gets another mark down, you know, consolidates in this area. And this one's just already just completely broken through. Uh, is that what we see on Bitcoin? I mean, this is, this is about the reaction that I'd be looking for if the current lows do break. I mean, you see the same sort of just sideways momentum go, uh, going around your prior lows, essentially, and then the full on breakdown. That's kind of what I'm looking for on Bitcoin um, as far as my opinion goes. But remember, price action first. And let's just go over one last thing. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Um, you know, to me, looking at something external is very important and very, very useful. And we have the MVT signal right over here, the MVT signal, which 
is not ton, is telling us that this is not a low, but I, I, th I think that's, I've beaten that point to death. Again, if you want the full explanation on why, you, why I do not believe that this is a low, there's an hour long video in the long term analysis playlist explaining that fact, um, or sorry, explaining my opinions on that, which again, as far, as far as I'm concerned, as far as major market lows goes, this has nothing that I look for as a major market low. It doesn't mean that you can't have rallies off it. I mean, there's already, already a 30% rally a couple months ago, which was phenomenal. Uh, but as far as, you know, going back onto new all time highs off that very unlikely. Um, but this area right over here, a lot of people are looking at this area in 2014, 2015 area right over here and relating it to the area that we're looking at right now in 2019. And there are, there is some good merit to that. You do have a massive descending triangle right over here in your bull trap, uh, sending you down about 52% and then price action bounces up. What, uh, uh, what was it about? Sorry, not 50%, Jesus Christ, about 25% right over there. Okay, great. You do even see the same sort of a read on the MBT signal right over here. Jesus Christ, stop it. Oh, you bastard. You motherfuckers, stop this. There we go. Uh, just me getting autistically raged up about nothing over here. Sorry about that. But you basically have the same signature on the MBT signal where you're hanging around the 90 area right over here. You come down after this downtrend, put in a low, put in a high, come back down to your lows, and then put in a higher high. You see that same thing on price action. That's why everyone's looking at, you know, at, at this current area right over here and saying that this is, you know, going to go back to 5,000, baby, or, or 6,000, whatever the fuck it is. I think that's incredibly unlikely. I mean, yeah, we have the same sort of uh, descending triangle right over here, breaking down, right? And this is what I hate about fractals. Um, you know, 51% down, then what? Over the course of about six to eight weeks, or sorry, eight to 10 weeks, we, we play out a nice 25% bounce. Um, pretty damn weak We on the MBT signal, which again, the MBT signal is the network value divided by, divided by the daily transaction value, and then triple uses support, uh, 90 days forward, backwards, moving average, essentially. Um, we have the same sort of a read on this guy. We are still, we are literally, quite literally in the same area, the 90 area right over here. We are, you know, we come all the way down, put in a high, pop back down, put in a, put in a higher high right over here, and then pop back down to lows once again. And now we're wrestling with the moving average on this, which we actually did bounce off of so far. Fair enough. Um, but my point is, is that people are looking for a higher high in price action. My argument would be that I think that we've already seen that according to the MBT right over here. I, I, I believe that we've already seen this probably play out. Um, and this is why fractals are very misleading because price action can be price action has brotherly characteristics in the way that it plays out its market cycles. Yes, absolutely. But it's not identical. And that's what fractals kind of portray price action to be. Again, how do you even fucking manage risk on a fractal? I don't know how. I mean, everyone was trying to play Mr. Genius uh, posting the market cycle cheat sheet. Uh, the Wall Street Mark Cycle cheat sheet um, all the way from 2000 to 20,000 saying that the top is in because fractal, you know, it's like, okay, well, fucking tell me how that's going for you, Hagen Re over there. Uh, you know, it's 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 one of those things where it's misleading because at some point in time it will work. At 20,000 it worked. <laughs> but how many times did you have to go through it before before getting wrecked bef uh, and before it worked out? I mean, that's that's my whole point with fractals. Um so again, a lot less jokes during this uh, during this morning stream. More serious tone today, as I've had too much coffee. Um, but yeah, you know that's kind of what I'm looking at. Uh, let's go back and wrap this bitch up. I we we just barely glossed over the lower time frames, but hourly right over here actually has reclaimed the uh, the 21 exponential hourly Stokes still headed north. Actually just opened up. What about two hour Stokes? Yeah, still headed north as well. Like Mr. Peter, uh, we got the 21 exponential coming in right around 3380. That's exactly where I'll be managing risk on this trade. So I'll, I'll probably be taken out pretty damn soon. Three hours, same sort of a thing. You know, we are still headed north on this guy. Uh, just just barely, but um, looking okay. Four hour, I believe, just had a fresh cross the upside. So there are a lot of things saying that we actually do bounce up here. You know, to be fair, there are a lot of things saying uh, all, all the medium to low time frames are saying that we actually bounce up here. I believe six hour are actually, are six hour is still crossed down. Hmm, interesting. What about eight hour? Eight hour are still crossed down. What about 10 hour? 10 hour still crossed down. Okay. 12 hour? 12 hour? Bueller still crossed down and finding resistance at the edge of the bearish control zone. So again, you know, you know, whether we do have a bounce here or not, keep in mind the critical levels, which I'll go over just one last time right over here. As long as Bitcoin is below this 3480-ish, or sorry, 3380-ish area right over here, you know, I, I am, you know, I, I am certainly on guard. I'll, I'll hold on to the short position, although it looks, if I'm going off the lower time frames, it looks like price action wants to go higher, uh, to, be, to be quite clear. It looks like it wants to move a little bit higher. Uh, 3400 is the next resistance after that. I would imagine that if it does get there, this is going to start to look a lot more like a bear trap. 
but that is not fully confirmed really until you get back above 3430 which i know is quite quite uh, quite aggressive up here um but basically getting back above this resistance trend line right over here i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that it's probably best to wait for a gbdc to wake up because i want to see if that one moves up or <laughs> that does that does it go up or down basically does it have continuation or do we get back above that 393 critical level if it gets back above 393 i'd be very comfortable with saying probably going to be a bear trap on spot if it, if it goes lower then this probably gets faded in uh, 3380 will likely be the resistance um, so again keep in mind those higher uh, these the, these critical levels uh, if Bitcoin gets back above 3480 and especially 33 or 3500 ish area I would not want to be short out I'd even want to be entertaining a long as I don't think there's too much stopping from about 3700 but as long as we're in this range right over here as long as we're stuck in this lower blo uh, block you know yeah I you know I, I will be looking for a move down around here just based off of this measure move, based off of this measure move, and based off our fibs and whatnot that we're looking at, and also the volume profile if we bring it back one more time. But hey, until it actually breaks this area, uh, 3350, it's hard, you know, <laughs> until you break 3350, you can't go lower. It's like no shit crown. Yes, I understand that. But my point is, is that, you know, as, as long as you're above this area, the, the, the chance for a bounce back up and putting in a bear trap is actually still very much available, which makes this, uh, which makes this tricky and difficult. Um, so again, if you are trading this right now, I'd have stops in place and I would be, uh, I'd, I'd be quick to reassess if this does move against as, there's going to be a big play likely soon, according to the volume um, of the consolidation, according to the volatility, according to the historical volatility rate as well, as well as just the overall formation and price structure. But with a little bit of patience, you know that could take a couple of weeks to a month. Um, again, so this is uh, this is probably going to do it for me. I'll be back on likely later today with some more live stream action. Hopefully, we can get some price action so we don't have to repeat the same shit over and over again. Because I know that's annoying for you, uh, likely the viewer. Um, but if not, maybe I'll just maybe I'll just uh, start a stream to just kind of hang out and chat. Maybe we can talk about trading psychology, which I'm actually considering making a new video series on that because that's something that I'm actually very much interested in and uh, something that I really, 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 really like to share as I don't read books on trading. I don't think that books on trading are all that useful. I think books on trading psychology are incredibly useful. I think books on psychology are even more useful because <laughs> they're like done from actual, you know, researchers and professors in the field, not just like <laughs> some random guy who thinks that he's figured it out. Anyways, that's going to do it for today. Hope this one finds you well. I'll be back on likely later today and I look forward to speak with you soon. Take care.